Hello, I'm Deborah Sadler, and I'm so grateful to Harrison Library for offering to host my Virgil exhibition. I'm delighted to be able to present my work to you this way. Okay, so first up is a completely new piece inspired by a conversation here at the library. We had discussed an Irish theme in keeping with a few speakers and events scheduled to happen in April. I thought making a cloud of Irish step dancers would be entertaining. Initially, my plan was to have them very coordinated and professional, but bundling them all together at various stages of mid-jump and kick was all the more hilarious to me. They're a ramshackle bunch, but they are very enthusiastic. Another enthusiastic bunch from another season, uh, my carol singers, are catching colds out here in their snow and their miniskirts. I particularly like the girl in the aviator hat. She doesn't really seem like she knows what's going on. Speaking of not knowing what's going on, this poor waitress is working her first day at a restaurant run by a particularly aggressive turtle. I was experimenting here with stronger background colours and more subdued character colours. I've been playing with perspective and also experimenting with framing options. This frame is the lid of an old cigar box. A couple of other cigar box pictures now. Both part of a series I've been working on about peculiar hauntings. A ghost tour on a family vacation a few years ago included a chilling story of a haunted cafe. And so I couldn't resist developing the thought of a helpful ghost waitress. And after a haunted cafe, why not a haunted garden centre? By night, our helpful ghost tends the flowers. Her hair hopefully conveys the notion that she's floating weightlessly through space. Another crazy hair sculpture here. I've grouped the hair a little differently to try and add a underwater look. This is pretty much a straight portrait of my long-limbed older daughter. Not that she has gone snorkeling with a huge pink fish, but if she ever did, she would look just like this. And to show parity in everything, the Chicken Whisperer is a straight-up portrait of my younger daughter. She's the kind of kid who lists sitting in a chicken coop as her favourite thing on a family vacation. Strangely appropriate after chickens, I suppose, next up is The Fox and the Nuns, or Heavens Above, by its real title. It sounds like a fable. Nuns are really fun characters to uh, make and to caricature. The habits are so simple and they contrast really nicely with other details in the sculpture, in this instance the fox. And you've probably noticed I enjoy taking every opportunity I can to break the frame of the sculpture or incorporate the frame in the piece. This nun is enjoying a conversation with a random orange bird, maybe an enormous oreo. I was going to make it a cardinal, but even I thought that would be a little too corny. With this bird, I was trying to test just how simply I could convey bird form. This is literally four tiny pieces of paper and a blob of hot glue, so it has no real structure, just a general birdishness. And another nun. Ridiculous as this scene may be, it's another one straight out of real life. In Switzerland last summer, we watched a lovely older nun and her little scruffy dog hop off the train and head out along a hiking path. The colours and the scenery and the characters reminded me of a children's book. Originally I just had this character sitting with the huge ocean behind her, but I felt like she needed to be looking at something. So I added the cute chubby little airplane. The never turn your back on the ocean banner is a little ominous, but it makes me laugh. Here's another beach goer. Of course, I, if I don't put clothes on characters, they're naturally mostly made out of cocktail sticks, so she's a little on the skinny side. I was thinking of a 3D version of some of those tacky postcards when I made this. I called it Sun Factor 50, but I suppose really it ought to be Wish You Were Here. And now another day at the beach. This one inspired by a memory of a day with cousins taking turns to feed seagulls part of their picnic lunch. So we call it my turn. The black background was intended to help silhouette the shape of the bird. In Liddy's line, I was also working with a black background and frame. 
I usually associate the ladies sugary pastel colours with light backgrounds so placing them against the gloss black was an experiment and I like how it contrasts. The next piece is called Art Critics and here they are with their plastic glasses of wine in hand pondering the meaning behind a ceramic chicken in a top hat. I've been working with altering some textures and it's tricky to show restraint once you start but I like how a little bit of varnish worked on this one. Now from the visual to the musical arts, it's fun to pose the characters as seated without actually using chairs. All the chair lags would have been too busy and the musician silhouettes would have been harder to read. Of course, no performance is complete without an audience and here they are sitting without chairs. It's fun to hint at the set without actually having to construct every detail. In the long wait, our heroine waits outside her front yard looking up the street for the return of someone. I'm not sure if the cup of tea is for them or for her, but she's about to spill it. This was one of the first pieces where I really tried to play with the perspective uh, to the point where she really truly leans out of her frame. She's looking beyond the walls of it. I've wondered about making another image to explain what she's waiting for, but I think maybe it's more fun just to leave it up to your own imagination. Pirates Lost and Found is yet another idea I have for a story about a bird who collects treasures, except this parrot opens up his own shop of interesting things he has stolen, or rather found. Okay, now a change of subject to a big favourite of mine, vampires. Here a vampire and her bat friend are waking up from their roost, obviously so deep in the forest they don't have any sunlight fall on them. It's autumn, Halloween probably. I think vampires are the only figures I give facial features to. Well, at least I give them mouths and they're always terribly glamorous. In this vampire scene, one of the group of three friends is just waiting to be invited back into the group. I belong to that generation that watched Salem's Lot on TV much, much too young. Okay, so no more vampires, I think. I'm not sure what it is about geese, I just find them inherently funny. The original sculpture here, I had just had two female characters looking up, but in this instance I really wanted them to see what they were looking at. And what better than a goose? In Party Goose, the guest of honour is particularly keen to get on with opening his presents. This framed piece actually started off as a freestanding sculpture, but I felt it needed some higher elements, so the balloons in the background frame really work. Paper sculpting balloons is a little different. I know in real life balloons don't have folds and corners, but on the squint at least here I think they work. The final two pieces in my show are among my most recent. They are two scenes from the working life of a goose and his friend the girl, or the life of a girl and her friend the goose, depending on how you look at it. In Goose Cakes, here she is visiting the goose-owned cake shop on a weekend morning. I wanted to use very muted colours for this piece, so a coat of varnish in the back of the frame hopefully provides enough contrast to keep the goose from disappearing into the background and hopefully it also conveys a sense of the shop window. And yes, that's a lot of cakes. It was a very busy goose. And finally, here's the goose out doing his shopping at the local bookstore a few years later. Now the girl is a shop clerk and he is here to research inland waterways. If you look carefully, you might find he's brought her a cake box. I use varnish in this piece again to give it some consistency with the Goose Cakes piece. And that concludes this virtual tour of my exhibition. I hope you enjoyed it.